Happy birthday, Granddaddy! We love you. All right, Granddaddy, 90 years, that's a hell of an accomplishment. We're lucky to have you. We're all very blessed that you're our grandfather and father and all those things. I think my favorite story is when you took us to school one morning when we were little and we were a little late getting off the exit. We kind of told you, hey, Granddaddy, there's the exit right there. And you quickly swerved across three lanes of traffic to make sure uh, we got to school on time. And you know what it taught me was it's never too late to get going in the right direction. So happy birthday, granddaddy. I love you. Happy birthday, granddaddy. I can't believe you're 90 years old. What a milestone. Of course, my favorite memory with you is when we got to go to Arizona together and scope out the University of Arizona. We had a lot of adventures in that one trip and it was so fun getting to spend that time with you. I also loved when you and Paul flew out to join me and dad for that trip. That was a blast. And one of the things I've always loved about you is that you give the very best hugs. I always felt like they had extra squeeze in them. So I love you, I wish I was there, and I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Hi, Granddaddy. Happy birthday. I can't believe you're 90 years old. My favorite memory with you is when you sent me the banana jokes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Granddaddy. I like visiting you in Pensacola. Yay! Happy birthday, Granddaddy. One of my favorite memories is uh, whenever we go to your house, you always push the boys on the swings in your yard. Happy birthday, Granddaddy. There's a few really great memories that I have. One of them is I remember when you and Greg pulled up with about six trailer fulls of tools and stocked my whole garage full and how many projects we've gotten done at the house because of those tools. Another one of my favorite memories is we were all inside except you and the boy, you and the kids actually, were all outside and the boys had just gotten this stomp rocket. And I looked outside to make sure everything was going okay and sure enough there you were pretending to sit on the rocket launcher while the boys stomped and you would jump up and and make a big big hoot and holler about it and that was that was probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen and the boys were just having a blast and and the last the last memory that really sticks out is you gave me one of the little reference books and Sarah looked at me because I got so excited about it and she said what what what's going on like why are you so excited about that book and I said this is like a little book that tells you anything you want to know. And I said, watch, ask me any question, and I bet it's in here. And she jokingly said, well, how much does Pluto weigh? And I flipped right to the page, and it told me exactly how much Pluto weighed. Hey, boys. <laughs> Hi, Granddaddy. Happy birthday. 90. Ah! Um, I think one of my favorite memories of you that just defines you as a person is how when I was younger, all I wanted was a playhouse. And you spent one summer out there in the heat building probably the sturdiest playhouse in America. That thing was not going to ever blow away, fall down, anything. And you built it just for me. So that just defines you as a person. I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you in one of your snazzy shirts soon. Happy birthday. Granddaddy is at... at I think it was my first or second Christmas, he presented me with a real nice toolbox. And the first thing I did as I looked at him, I said, Dad, thanks for a great gift. I'm sure Karen's gonna enjoy using these tools. Here we are sitting behind the Surf and Sand Hotel on Pensacola Bay, where yesterday we got started on Victor B's 90th birthday weekend with a wonderful dolphin cruise all the way down to Ford at the end and back beautiful evening and a fabulous weekend. Happy birthday, Victor B. Happy birthday, granddaddy. I think one of my favorite memories um, and great explanations of who you are as a person is how you will drop anything and literally drive anywhere for all of your grandchildren. 
Um, one example of this recently is when I lived in Atlanta and you heard through the grapevine I was looking for a piece of furniture for the end of my bed. You planned a trip to Atlanta to drive through to us just to drop off a piece of furniture you had found and refurbished just for me to fit that perfect spot. I love you so much and I can't believe 90 is here. We are all so lucky. Happy 90th birthday, Dan. We're thrilled to be here to celebrate with you. Thinking about stories back in time, I remember when we were in high school and we were starting to date. You would pull each one of us aside and what I remember you telling me is you are in charge, you're in control. And in general, you taught us that in life, that we could be in charge of anything that we put our mind to and that we could do anything we wanted to do. You didn't treat us differently than boys, I don't think, in a lot of ways. You taught us how to fix things. You taught us how to do things. You always treated us as if we could do whatever we thought we wanted to do. You also were always there. Any family event, didn't matter how far you had to drive, you were the fearless driver. You would get in the car and go as far as it would take to be there to celebrate any child or grandchild event. You took us to look at colleges. You drove us around the country to various things. I still remember hearing about you driving to Indianapolis for Anthony's football games and then driving over to Nebraska for weddings. And that was, I think, when you were in your 80s. So you stressed the importance of family and you always made sure that family was together whenever possible. We love you, Dad. Happy 90th. Happy birthday, Dad. I think a lot of my stories have already been covered, but a couple things that haven't been mentioned so far is no one said the most important thing to know about Victor B is that when a story begins with the trick is, you're gonna get some good advice. Second thing that I don't think anybody's mentioned so far is when teaching someone to drive, you need to make sure that they know to move out smartly. Third thing is I wanna mention all of the coaching that you did when I was little. Basketball, golf, softball, I think even tennis a little bit. And each time, you would try so hard to make me into a better athlete with lots of the trick is, and I don't think I ever got it. I mean, I was okay, but you know, I don't think I ever quite measured up, but you sure did try a lot and I appreciate that. And that was one of the examples of how you always let us know that we mattered. You did lots of things with us. You were there for us. You tried to guide and advise us. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday weekend to dad. We're having such a great time here celebrating your 90th birthday. What a major accomplishment in your wonderful life. I'm so happy to be part of my wonderful family. Sending much love to all of the kids who aren't here. We miss you, but we old folks are having a good time and looking forward to 10 years from now, when we celebrate Dad's 100th birthday. Happy birthday, Dad, and many, many more. Love you. Bye. Happy birthday, Granddaddy. Happy birthday. We love you so much. Uh, we're hoping you're having a great time with everybody visiting. Um, such a special time to have everybody together for a big milestone. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon um, and introducing to you to your uh, new great-granddaughter. We love you. Have a great day. Happy birthday. Reporting live from poolside in Naples, Florida, a confidential informant has told us that Victor B. Demarest is celebrating his 90th birthday up in Pensacola, Florida, surrounded by his wife and family. Victor, we hope you have a great day. You've been a great asset in my life, but it's a pleasure knowing you. Wish you many more. Happy birthday, Vic. Happy, Happy birthday, granddaddy. You can do it, say granddaddy. Granddaddy. That's right. Say happy, birthday. Can you say happy birthday. Yeah. We'll say it. Love you.
Well, you. Lots and lots. lots. 90 years. Can't believe it. Yeah. Yes. It's a big celebration. Blow a kiss, Morgan. Yeah. You do it. Hi, Green Daddy. Happy birthday. One of my favorite memories together is spending the summer with you and Mimi while I was doing the musical camp and learning that I really liked spicy mustard, especially on a roast beef sandwich. More recently, one of my favorite memories has been watching Alec use all the tools that you gave him to build out the different rooms in his house, like using the saw to build his kitchen cabinets. Really, really cool. Love you. Hope you have a great day. The longest story I've ever heard in my life was when Granddaddy told me about his first car. And it started in the northern border of Kentucky. And by the time we reached the Tennessee line, it was over. So the whole state of Kentucky was the story of Granddaddy's first car. So I had just gotten my driver's license. I wasn't much more than 16 years old and I had an event at my high school to go to in the evening. But on the way, I needed to drop Barbara off at the church that was down the street for a Girl Scouts event. So I dropped her off and realized that she had left something in the car that she needed. So I pulled into a driveway and I picked a bad one because it was difficult to see when I backed out of the driveway. And as luck would have it, I backed out right into a police officer and had an accident. And I was so upset that I could hardly talk, but we were close to home. So the police officer had me follow him or he followed me back to our house and talked to my dad about it. And what I remember the most about it is dad said after the police officer left, well, looks like that got you pretty shook up and got back in the car with me and drove me to the event at my high school. And that was about the end of that. Happy birthday, Granddaddy. Hopefully you're getting tons of fancy new button-up shirts for your 90th. Just make sure that all the ones you got for your 89th birthday make it my way so I can put them to good use. Happy birthday, Granddaddy. Love you. Happy birthday, Granddaddy. We love you. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Vinny, can you say happy birthday, Granddaddy? Say hello. Hello. Say I love you. Love you. Say have a good day. Have a good day. Yep. Now blow a kiss. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Hey, Granddaddy. I wanted to wish you a happy birthday along with everyone else. Um, David asked us to share some short stories. and One of my most uh, quoted ones, I, I feel like it's half remembered now. I'm not even sure exactly how it happened, but... When I was younger, we were down in Naples, and I remember he pulled me aside one day, going through puberty, like maybe 12 or 13, somewhere around there. And he basically said, there are two ways to be a man. You can either play football, or you can join the Army. He sort of looked me up and down and said, I don't think you're going to play football. And I didn't join the Army, and luckily, you were proved right, I'm probably not a man. But I think what you were trying to tell me, and I, something I think about a lot, is that there is a certain sense of believing in being part of something bigger than yourself, and specifically being part of something with other people, and showing respect to those, those processes, and in those processes, finding meaning and, and giving oneself up to the routine and the hard work and the drudgery of not being just yourself, but being a whole with, with other people. And that's something I think about a lot. That's something I've always valued, and I think it, it came from you, that it's, it's not so nice to be special and by yourself, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be with other people, striving towards something. And that's what makes you an adult. That's what makes you a man. Um, I guess it gets a law to use gender terms like that in, in California, so I'm sort of whispering it. But, yes, it, it makes you the kind of person that people want to be around that's why so many of us love you so much, and that's why I love you so much. Is you taught us to put ourselves in the back seat and, and the joy and the pleasure and, uh, and caring about others. And we always really appreciate that. I love you, Granddaddy. Hi, Granddaddy. Coming to you live from my back seat. 
One of the top locations to learn a lesson from granddaddy is the back seat of a car. Um, there is a correct way to pack a car I've learned. And the number one rule is make sure you've got a bag of root beer barrels behind the driver's seat. Uh, my best granddaddy story is shortly after Karen and I moved into our first house, uh, mom and dad came in from Pensacola to kind of help out, help around the house. And I was real busy at work at the time. And dad, I remember, calls me up and tells me he needs me to pick up a bushing, you know, at the warehouse, okay? So I said, no problem. I'll pick up the bushing. And when I got off the phone, I said to myself, you know, how big is this bushing? You know, what kind of truck do I need? You know, do I need a tractor trailer, a straight truck, a van? And I couldn't get a hold back. Dad back then didn't have a, didn't have a dang on uh, uh, cell phones. So I ended up taking a straight truck, and the box I picked up was about the size of a pack of cigarettes. So that's my best story, being the handyman that I am. story about your father's not funny. The best story about your father is him saving my life. Right? Because when everything fell apart and everybody was panicked, he's the only one in the world that put his hands on my shoulder and said to me, you can do this, you can do this. And nobody else was there. And, that, and from that moment on, I knew I could do this. And anything that happened in my life that was hard, I always remembered that, I can do this. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Granddaddy. Granddaddy. Our most cherished memory with you is of our wedding weekend when you insisted upon attending, uh, despite the wishes of your doctor, a hurricane, and a pandemic. We feel so honored that you made us your priority at that time. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 90th birthday, Dad. David asked us to tell some stories, and I was trying to think of something that maybe we haven't talked about in a while. So one thing I wanted to mention for your birthday is that you were ahead of your time. So you've been recycling as long as I've been alive because I remember as a little kid having to stop on the side of the road and pick up trash and bring it home for you to uh, make something out of or to add to your collection in the garage. So ahead of your time on recycling and uh, climate change. So granddaddy was the original recycler, upcycler. He was way before his time and he always made things out of old materials. And one of the first things that I remember and really loved as a child was the little playhouse that he made for us in the backyard. Indianapolis Star, which is the newspaper in Indianapolis, was interviewing him as my dad for a Father's Day article. And the article was about what are the things that you did to raise your child, your girl, to be the successful person that she is today. And when he was asked that question, granddaddy's answer was, I chose the best mother. And I thought that was a great answer and I really enjoyed seeing it in the paper. We needed to be picked up from school and you told Vicki and me to yell out Tyrone instead of dad. And upon reflection, the name Victor is not that common, so I'm not quite sure why we yelled out Tyrone, but that was just a funny thing we used to do to get your attention so you knew where we were to be picked up after school or at sports events. But mainly the thing I remember the most is that you always made sure we knew that we mattered to you. You always let us know through your actions and what you did for us and being there for us that we matter to you. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy 90th birthday, Dad. I'd like to share one of my most memorable times that I got to spend with you. And that was a time that you and I got to ride on a go-kart that you built. And I'll never forget that wild ride we took down a steep, steep hill in front of one of our houses. Um, and we had quite a finish. Uh, you were pretty remarkable recovering from broken ribs and all kinds of damages, but we came out all right, and we have a good story to tell. Love you, Dad. Happy 90th birthday. Girls, and he described 
Barbara as the smartest and Maureen as the hardest worker. And I think Vicki may have been the sweetest, which we know is true. And then he told this person that Karen was the most improved. Thanks, Dad. Okay, I guess my sign off tonight is after all these years, 38 years of marriage and not being a handyman, uh, the last time I was in Pensacola, there was some damage to the fence because of one of the hurricanes or something that came through. And dad told me he needed me to fix the, the, uh, the, the fence, told me where the tools were, how to, how to use the drill, the, the wood I needed. And I went out and I put two, I put two pieces of uh, wood into the, tr into the fence that made it sturdy. And dad told me I'd, pa I'd finally passed my apprenticeship after 38 years. But I were traveling with Mimi and granddaddy up to Uncle Dave's for some holiday or another. We were going on double digit hours in the car when he caught my eye in the back seat and made sure that I saw the dead bird that was on the windshield and that, you know, Jacob was aware of the situation as well. Once he made sure that both of our eyes were fixed on the dead bird, he turned on the windshield wipers, got rid of the uh, carcass, and said, now that's what I call flipping the bird. I lost it. And for me, him being serious 99% of the time before that, that was absolutely hilarious to me and something that I won't forget. Hey, happy birthday!